Welcome back everyone. So we are going to be unboxing Claire's Sip Star Box for January. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so let's see what is in the box today. Yeah. All righty. All right, we're going to decorate a pillowcase, make a dream journal, and then do a polar bear craft. That's right, because we're going to do our fun craft. And then it says, fun fact. I fun fun fact. fact. Yeah. So, Norton's yeah. children's fun fact. Yeah. Did you know there are 300 yeah. beds in Norton's I children's like that. hospital? Yeah. That means in one night, we could have up to 300 kids of all ages having a giant hospital sleepover. That's crazy. That's a lot, isn't it? Yeah. See, and that, look, that's a bed. That looks like your sissies. All right, so these are for the polar bears. And we have some blue. We have a plate. We and got some sprinkle lighting. It says we have some googly eyes in here. list is we are making a polar bear craft. Create your own polar bear face. Glue the cotton balls on the plate. Decorate it with the googly eyes and pipe cleaner to make the face. Putting an eye mask on is a great way to start falling asleep. Think about all the things that help you feel relaxed and sleepy and decorate the eye mask on your pillowcase with them. Feel free to decorate outside of the mask as well. all the time, doesn't sound like fun. You can do better, let me show you what a good time looks like. You can do better, so much better. you sleepy and what you put on your pillowcase? Um, I make me sleepy when I cuddle together with mommy and the ointment. Which is the oil from the oil diffuser. And the book and some cocoa. Some hot cocoa? Uh-huh. And this is a hot and little coconut and a rainbow. Water. Like, go 
Mm -hmm. That's so cute. Can you introduce yourself? Uh, my name is Mark Thompson. I'm your dad. And I'm Veronica Thompson, your mama, AKA Gigi. So what is your favorite thing about being a grandparent? My favorite thing is I can uh, spoil them and then uh, give them back to you. I don't have to worry about all the other little things that come along with it. Yeah, I agree. What was your initial reaction when you found out about Caroline having Down syndrome and esophageal atresia? I wasn't I wasn't worried about the Down syndrome. Uh, what I was worried about was the esophageal atresia because I had never heard of it. I didn't know what it was. So I had to go research what exactly it was. And I mean, it was very scary. So. Um, I was a little sad because I felt like things would be different for her compared to the other grandchildren, but I knew we'd be able to get through it. How do you think Caroline being in the hospital has affected your relationship with her? Um, I think that it's been kind of hard because I make sure that I'm here for the girls so you can go up there and I really haven't, I've bonded with her, but not as much as it would have been if she was home. I don't think it. Uh, I don't think it's affected at all. Really, the only thing is we don't get we don't get to to play and, and just be together like you know I am with the other grandkids. But I but I know that time will come. How have you been able to cope and process Caroline being in the NICU so long? Uh, it's been it's been difficult. Just being, being there for such a long period of time and just the traveling back and forth and then seeing you and Ryan go back and forth is it's just a it's just a lot to ask of anybody. You know, but it's your child, so you're gonna do whatever you need to do. And you're gonna cope however however you need to to get you know, to get through whatever situation you're going through. And then you'll just deal with with everything else later. I think it's been really hard because you know, she's not around like the other babies. Um, I've kind of just been your support and been there for the girls. So um, I just kind of go with the flow with the situation and try to be as active with whatever you're going through with Caroline and the girls. Were you afraid to hold Caroline when she was first born? No, I wasn't afraid to hold her. The only thing I just knew I had to be more careful because of uh, like the muscle issues uh, that she has. So. I knew she wasn't, uh, she was just going to be different, so I had to be more careful, so, but, but I wasn't afraid. Yeah, I wasn't afraid either. Um, I was there when she was born, so I was excited to hold her. I wasn't afraid. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> How has Caroline's diagnosis opened your eyes to Down syndrome and esophageal atresia? I don't think I have been thought about it before, but now it's like, I didn't realize there were so many organizations or benefits that she, um, that are there for her. And there's just so much information. It's just, it's just kind of interesting. Well, I mean, it's something totally new. So of course we had to do research and things like that. And there's a, the good things are a lot of support, you know, uh, for Down syndrome in the, in the Louisville area and here. So, so that that's good. So it's just, just, uh, just learning the ins and outs of, you know, the organizations and how we can help and what we can do to, uh, to make things better for Caroline. Do you see yourself treating Caroline different than the other grandchildren because of the challenges she had faced since birth with her surgeries and being away from family for so long? Um, I don't see myself treating her any different at all. You know, as soon as she comes home, you know, the first. The first time I'm able to get her into a headlock, I will. You know, the first time I'm able to give her a fish hook, you know, I will. Uh, first time I can throw her across the room, I will. You know, so I don't want to treat her any different than I treat the other kids. Unless there's, unless there's reasons physically that I cannot. You know, but I want her to feel the same as the other kids. Um, I think it's going to be different, you know, because of her challenges. But I think 
we're going to love her just as much and, you know, try to help her with whatever we can to, you know, through what she's going through. In your eyes, how has it been watching me and Ryan go through this with Caroline and having the two other girls? Um, watching you go through this and all that you've done, you and Ryan have done, it's just been amazing to see and the support that you give uh, Caroline and all the things that you're doing for her and for the Down Syndrome Association. And, um, you know, it's, just been, it's been very uh, nice to watch you guys and how you are interacting with everything. I mean, it is difficult uh, watching y'all go back and forth all the time and just all the all the time that you put in on the road. And uh, it's just, it's, I mean, I know how it feels to go back and forth every day, you know, uh, an hour both ways. Uh, and the toll that it takes on, it takes on you mentally and physically, you know, and it's been going on you know, five months now. So I, I know how difficult that can be so i know i know uh, everyone will be happy once this is uh once she's finally home and we can you know just deal with things here and not have to go back and forth and go to different places i know it'll be a lot easier here but just seeing both y'all go through it I mean, y'all both have, have done really a great job and especially doing things like this and um, having the uh, you know the youtube channel and reaching out to people and then people reaching out to y'all and the, the conversations back and forth, you know, that's, that's helping y'all and, and actually helping other people. I think, uh, I think all that is, uh, is really amazing. Do you have any advice for other grandparents or families going through similar situations? Uh, my advice is to be patient. Uh, be patient with, uh, uh, with your grandkids, the ones that, that aren't, uh, at the hospital, the ones that are home with you, because uh, they, they will try your patience. Um, uh, just be, uh, just be supportive, you know, to um, uh, to your kids as much as possible, you know, because sometimes they'll work your nerves too. But we all do it, you know, because we love each other. You know, we're a family. We're going to take care of each other regardless. Because I'm sure, as grandparents, we get on people's nerves as well. So this is this is loving each other through this whole process. Um, be there, be supportive, and um, it is a lot. Um, do your research, you know, and it's going to get better eventually. And just stay positive as best as you can. And thanks, uh, thanks for asking those questions. And if you have anything else you want to ask us as grandparents, just uh, just let us know. Be sure to hit uh, hit the like button and share it and subscribe. And uh, you know, we'll be watching just like y'all will. Thanks for supporting our family. We love y'all. Are you eating? I'm eating everybody.